If you spend a lot of time around Melbourne's rail network, there's a good chance you might catch a glimpse of something like this. It's an infrastructure evaluation train, and in this video we're going to take a quick look at what these trains do, and have a bit of a look at the history of some of the specialised rolling stock involved. Over the past four decades, the Victorian railway network has been routinely patrolled by a collection of rather interesting vehicles, which survey for defects in the track and overhead wiring, creating a record of infrastructure geometry to monitor its condition. This was first done back in the 1980s, when V-Line acquired a self-propelled vehicle known as EM100, from Austrian company Plaza Ventura. It was originally painted in V-Line Tangerine, but in the 90s it passed into the ownership of VicTrack, the government body that manages Victoria's rail infrastructure, and was painted in a unique white, black and orange livery. It measured track geometry using a small set of measuring wheels located between the two bogies. It was also fitted with a pantograph for measuring the position of the overhead wire, although I don't think it did this very often and the pantograph was always lowered whenever I saw it. EM100 was easily gauge convertible and was used to patrol the entire state broad gauge network as well as the standard gauge lines. It was fitted with a very loud and distinctive horn, which allowed me to wake up and photograph it very early in the morning on several occasions. In 2012, the original measuring wheels were replaced by a much more sophisticated laser measurement system, and it passed into the ownership of Metro Trains Melbourne, getting a new much smarter livery and Metro logos. Despite being under Metro's control, it continued to patrol the regional network as well, an arrangement which continues with the evaluation trains to this day. In 2013, it was reclassified IEV100 for Infrastructure Evaluation Vehicle, and in about 2015, its long disused pantograph was removed. However, the need to measure overhead wire geometry hadn't gone away, and in 2010, after a series of rather public overhead wire faults, Metro commissioned a new vehicle for this job. IV102 is a carriage with a long and interesting history. It was built in 1958 as a Blue Harris suburban trailer car, then rebuilt in 1984 as a country carriage as part of the HSET program. However, this was one of four cars which didn't become part of a normal HSET. Instead, it became an MTH rail motor trailer, designed to be hauled behind Derm and DRC rail cars, and they got a modified version of the V-Line livery to match the DRCs. The MTHs had diesel generators under the floor, as the rail motors that hauled them had no way of providing power for lights and air conditioning. By the early 90s, the need for rail motor trailers had dried up, and the four MTH cars found themselves being locomotive hauled on the Stony Point line. By the late 90s, they were fitted with onboard Metcard machines, as the minimalist stations on the Stony Point line didn't have any ticketing equipment. Then in 2007, Stony Point was taken over by Sprinters, and the four MTHs were put in storage at Newport Workshops, from where Metro picked out MTH-102 to be converted to IEV-102. I believe the other three MTHs are still in storage to this day. IEV-102 was fitted with a central observation cupola and a pantograph at each end, one for use in each direction. These weren't actually used to pick up power, and were for use in the surveying process only. The car still used its underfloor diesel generator for onboard power. The position of the overhead wire was recorded using a surprisingly manual process, where a camera inside the cupola pointed up at the pantograph, and the pantograph's conductor had markings on it so the position of the wire could be observed visually. Unlike AM100, IEV102 was not self-propelled, and therefore needed to be hauled by a diesel locomotive. Given Metro was going to need to do this on a regular basis, as well as running other suburban works trains, they took out a long-term hire on four T-Class diesels, as well as a pair of B-Class, from Chicago Freight Car Leasing Australia. They stayed in their CFCLA colours of blue and silver, but received some patches of light blue and Metro logos. While the single car was obviously well within the load of a single locomotive, the nature of the suburban network meant the IAV was frequently reversing direction in places where it wasn't possible to run a locomotive around. So the standard practice was to run it with two locos, nearly always a pair of T-Class, one on each end. IV102 was through cabled for multiple unit operation, so the two locomotives were able to be electrically connected, allowing a single crew to operate the train. It seems like a missed opportunity that the car wasn't fitted with a driving cap at one end, which would have removed the need for a second loco, although to be fair I have no idea how the cost of designing and implementing that would compare to the ongoing additional locomotive hire costs. In 2018, Metro returned their small fleet of diesels to CFCLA, and instead contracted freight operator Southern Short Haul Railroad, SSR, to provide locomotives and crews as required. In 2021, IV102 received a new type of pantograph fitted with automated laser measuring equipment, and it's important to note that these trains look very cool at night because the pantograph is illuminated. 
By the late 2010s, IV100 was getting pretty old, and IV102 was, let's face it, old from the beginning and a bit rough around the edges. And in 2021, Metro purchased a new dedicated vehicle to replace them both. EV120, for some reason the I got dropped from the classification system, is a combined track and overhead inspection vehicle built by Geismar, and it even has a name, EV. Like IV102, it has a central observation cupola, but only a single pantograph. It measures the track using lasers, which are bright enough to clearly see in broad daylight as it rolls past. Apparently the chosen number of 120 is because it's permitted to operate and record at 120 km per hour, however this is a bit of an odd detail to focus on given none of the locomotives that haul it are allowed to go that fast. Like IEV 102, EV is fitted with through cabling and usually runs sandwiched between two SSR locomotives, often T-Class, but increasingly also members of the P-Class, which SSR has acquired in recent years from V-Line. The whole train now has a pleasingly consistent look, although it's just a coincidence that SSR's corporate colours of yellow and black match the maintenance yellow worn by EV. The locomotives used to haul EV also run fitted with temporary nose-mounted cameras as part of the recording process. In April 2023, when EV was receiving some attention at Newport Workshops, Steamrail Victoria announced that they had taken over the contract to operate EV using a pair of their K-Class steam locos, which got a lot of people very excited until they looked more closely at the date. With multitasking EV now patrolling the network, IV100 was put into storage in 2021, and I last saw IV102 running late one night in June 2023. Victoria no longer plays a part in surveying the standard gauge lines, as the entire national standard gauge network is patrolled by the AK inspection cars, which are a three-car set of converted passenger cars fitted with inspection equipment, as well as big end windows, allowing staff a good view of the track behind. Meanwhile on the broad gauge, while we persist with running our inspection trains using 60-year-old diesels, up in New South Wales they have a pair of dedicated self-propelled mechanised track patrol vehicles, MTPV 1 and 2 delivered in 2014, which are also capable of surveying the overhead touch-free without using a pantograph. So if you're out travelling on the network, keep an eye out for EV. The evaluation train visits every line every few months, but not really on a predictable basis, so you'll need a tip-off or a bit of luck to see it. Thanks very much for watching.